Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Calibre de Cartier Diver, both a Cartier and a dive watch. You can see and you can purchase this Manufacture Movement Diver on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. Please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Calibre de Cartier Diver. Now, the watch is everything its name implies. It's a manufacture movement, MC1904, first unveiled on the, 19, the 1904 powered Calibre de Cartier of 2010. Uh, this model debuted in 2014 as Cartier's first modern dive watch. So outside the Pasha family, this is a watch that really forged new aesthetic language for what a modern Cartier sports watch could and should be. As a result, it might be one of the strongest offerings in the current Cartier catalog. More elegant than diver attempts by the likes of Breguet and sometimes even a number of the Blancpain 50 Fathoms family, it has an ergonomic logic that also makes it quite comfortable on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Now my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference and the watch is 42, but you can see that the 48 millimeter lug to lug span does nothing to challenge my wrist. And in fact, the shape of the case so perfectly matches the contour of a wrist that it sits pretty flush even if you don't strap it down. It's just sitting pretty because of the contour of the case, it is very secure. And that's not something I would risk with most near nearly $8,000 watches. It's also quite slim, 11.2 millimeters. Remember, a Rolex Submariner, which is perfectly acceptable in formal attire with tight dress sleeves, is 12.6 millimeters thick. This is 11.2 and slides easily beneath the dress sleeve, not just the suit jacket, but the cuff beneath. The watch is 42 millimeters in diameter from 9 to 3, not inclusive of the capuchon capped crown or the crown guards. And I have to really give a shout out to the shape of that case because these lugs are about as short and handsomely curved as I've ever seen. The aesthetics blending perfectly with the ergonomics, neither one compromising the other. You would almost think this watch, because of its slim profile and its 48.1 millimeter lug to lug span, was designed precisely to take on the Rolex Submariner. And again, that watch, 48.1 millimeter lug to lug, is very close in thickness and in span across the wrist. One element that the sub doesn't have is a beautifully integrated strap option. As you can see, not only does the strap pull down completely completely unconstrained, but it actually sits in a little garage recess within the flank of the case. This has also been done on the MIH watch, and I have to say that by recessing the strap pivot underneath the case band, Cartier has enabled wrists as small, in my estimation, as 13 and a half to 14 centimeters to wear this watch easily. They've also created a completely integrated aesthetic. There's no daylight visible between strap and case flank. I will show you one little quirk right here. As you can see from this angle, follow the line from screw to screw. This is a relic of Cartier design and the attachment of a bracelet as intended. There is a separate pivot point and a separate recess for housing the strap itself. Now the strap is a wonderful piece, vulcanized rubber, very supple. It has a nice hobnail pattern and a little bit of an evacuated channel on the top. You can see it is thick, designed for long wearing durability and it is rubber, not silicone. The buckle itself is made of stainless steel, polished on its flank, satin on its top, and Cartier cosigned to match the watch. The case itself is simple, handsome, nicely arced from lug to lug to create that curved camber to hug the wrist. There's a satin finish along the flank, and as you can see well from this angle, the junction of the case band and the lugs creates a small cleft that adds definition to the watch and a little bit of a vertical emphasis that nicely parallels the downward sweep of the lugs themselves. When viewed from head on, that is, either lug ends head on, it almost looks a little bit like a cushion case because of the splayed out cover to the garage that houses the pivot of the strap. So the watch has impressive wrist presence such that it looks far larger than 42. It looks like a 43 to 45 while fitting more like a 40. It's really the best of every world. There are small polished highlights as most of the finish is satin to resist glare. Fairly understated considering what this could have been. Again, think of the likes of the most outlandish dive watches from Blancpain and Breguet, and this is not that. You also note small hairline polished bevels along the flanks of the lugs, and a polished circumference adjacent to the knurling of the bezel. Now, the bezel is not ceramic, it is a ADLC, and as you can see, it has a wonderfully crisp detent to it. So the ADLC, while not quite as rugged as ceramic, also can't shatter or chip like ceramic. So that's the functional logic there. 
The feel of the bezel is best compared to a Grand Seiko Diver or a Blancpain 50 Fathoms. It's very refined and very subtle. It's easier to hear than it is to feel the detents. So you work principally by sound when you calculate how many detents are necessary to set the triangular index precisely to the minute hand. Broad sword style hands for hours and minutes, blackened with large swaths of loom. There's going to be a loom shot at the end of the video, so stay tuned. You can use this to time an interval from 0 to 60 minutes. And of course, it is a countdown style bezel, as you can see. You'll also note that there is an immense amount of style on the dial. The watch has a sort of concentric circular pattern running underneath the hour track, and an opaline or frosted black grained pattern about the base of the dial. I will see if I can show those to good advantage, but I'm not sure I have quite enough light in the light box right now. You will see, however, that the watch has common sense, instantly legible, white on black printing with small seconds, 300 meter dive capacity. There's a logic behind the triple date, the idea being that even if a hand is superimposed, you can see the preceding and the succeeding date so you can gauge the time correctly even if it's partly obscured. Again, there's going to be a loom shot at the end, and it will be worth your while turning the watch over. You can see that there's a handsome combination of satin and polish about the crown guard structure itself. Highly stylized and handsome. There's a cabochon, beautiful bright blue within the crown. When you were to screw the crown out, you'll find that it's quite easy to handle. It's faceted, and thus easy to gain purchase on the crown. So you can, for instance, hack the movement, stop the seconds, and synchronize to a reference time, or should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month, there is a quick set so you can rapidly cycle the date. The watch has a 48-hour power reserve supplied by twin mainspring barrels for very even and accurate torque metering throughout the full autonomy. With one barrel, sometimes you have uneven torque, and thus the watch will run alternately fast and slow as it discharges. With twin barrels, you get a more precise and regular release of power throughout the rated power reserve of the watch. Of course, hacking in the quick set, also notable, in addition to being protected to 300 meters, this watch has impressive stable mates in the Richemont, shall we say, universe of brands, as the new 56 collection from Vacheron Constantin in its entry-level model, the self-winding, uses a version of this MC1904 that is a Cartier manufacturer movement. It does business as the 1326 in the new Vacheron Constantin 56 self-winding. So you've got a little bit of a high horology pedigree there, too. 27 joules. Physically, it is exactly the same size as an ETA 2824-2892, so 25.6 millimeters. So it's a drop-in solution. You get a manufacturer movement. It's a true ISO 6425 certifiable dive watch, so it's the real thing, and beautifully blazing when the lights go down. This is a watch that satisfies in every circumstance. One part sports watch, one part dress watch, 100% Cartier. Decide if this one's the watch for you on our website. And we are looking at the Cartier Calibre de Cartier Diver. As you can see, that sub-seconds ring at 6 o'clock is magnificently loomed, as are the broadsword style hands, the stylized Roman numeral 12, and of course the index on the bezel, with a small luminescent plot outboard of each station of the hours. See it and buy it on our website.